Hey everyone, it's Jim and Charles from Valves and More, an online vintage tube store. And today in Tube Lab number 259, we're going to talk a little bit about 12AU7 tubes and their numbered variants. Well, at least a couple of them. <laughs> There's a lot. Yeah. Well, you've, I think you've chosen the two principal variants, right? Yeah. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. In our last Tube Lab episode, we briefly mentioned the North American Numbered Tube Identification System and how, with general purpose tubes like the 12AU7, it was common for manufacturers to make a numbered industrial or military version. Today, we thought we'd go through some GE manufactured 12AU7 variants. Look at and look at the similarities, the differences, and of course, listen to how they sound. But first, what is a 12AU7? And why is it a good tube to look at when we want to talk about different identification systems. Just like the 6SN7 they replaced, the 12AU7 is a general purpose dual triode meant primarily for amplifying voltage. This type of tube was the workhorse of the tube world and you can trace the origins of it all the way back to the number 27 from the first tube era. Actually we've got one of those right here so let's bring that in and show you just where these tubes began. Whoa! So there's a number 27 for a size difference here. <laughs> this is uh, one of the very first general purpose single triodes out there. And the number 27 very quickly changed into the number 76. Got a little bit smaller. And then that became the 6J5 and the 6P5. They're still single triodes. Still single triodes. And then those became the popular 6SN7s and 12SN7s. We're getting smaller with every generation, and now we've stuffed two tubes in one envelope. And then we went from those to what you see here today, which are three different versions of the 12AU7, and all of them were made by GE in the United States. So we're going to start over on the side here with this guy, and this is just a standard GE 12AU7 variant. I believe it's one of the later ones because they started off with a ladder plate, a gray ladder plate, and switched on over to this sort of boxy design here. Yeah, you can do a little bit of dating with GE tubes um, based on the um, whether they've got a black coating on the plate or whether they've got a gray coating. And uh, GE and RCA um, switched over uh, uh, sometime in the 1960s to the gray coatings. So black coatings generally mean an older tube. Not always, but generally. Yeah, and for the most of their life, the GE has used, or did use, the gray coatings on their, on their plates. Right here we have another variant. This is the 6189, which is another 12AU7 equivalent. And right over here we've got a 5814, but we'll come back to that one in a second here. So why do these extra numbers matter here? Well, it's essentially each major manufacturer out there wanted to come up with their own sort of improved, industrial, ruggedized, military, general purpose, dual triode, and they had 12AU7s already, so they basically just created another version of the 12AU7. And in most cases, they were identical in terms of specs. In fact, all three of these tubes here have identical load lines and almost identical spec sheets with one exception and that's with the 5814 says that it draws slightly more heat or current than the other two. Okay, well hang on, let's back up a little bit. What is a load line? Uh, a load line, uh, well we should actually have one out here. We'll be right back. Okay, so that's the average plate characteristics for the GE tube, the 12AU7. And this is just a whole bunch of different snapshots of how the tube performs at different plate voltages, different currents, and different grid voltages here. And if you look at the data sheets for all three of these GE tubes, they all essentially have the exact same copied set of characteristics. What's that really neat uh, curved line up 
about midway up the uh, the graph. Ah, that's the maximum dissipation. Above here, damaged tubes occur. <laughs> right. So lightning bolts and um, red plating. Yeah. Although it'd be pretty interesting to see red plating on a little signal tube. We should try that one day. <laughs> uh, don't try that at home, folks. Yeah. Okay, so what's next? All right, so each, each one of these different tubes, even though they have a different number on them, they have substantially the same internal components. So I'm going to pull up two of them here, right beside each other. This is uh, the standard 12AU7 over here. This is actually an HP branded one with one of those famous red tips on it. Yeah, so that means it was selected off the line for some specific properties, probably. Yeah, I, I've heard that it's for medical use, but um, I, I haven't been able to verify that information. But you can see we have the exact same plates on the inside here. And I've, I've carefully looked at these underneath the magnifier, and they are identical. So they were clearly coming off of the same tooling. But we do see some differences, though. If you look at the micas... Their structure is different. We clearly have a different getter material in the two tubes because we have a huge amount of flashing here and quite a bit less over here. And I don't know if you'll be able to see it in here, but the connections between the pins and the internal components are definitely using a different metallurgy on them. So this is the standard 12AU. This is the 6189 uh, industrial military variant. and. Even though they look very similar, there's definitely some differences in how they were constructed. Uh, which means that there's probably going to be a difference in sound. Mm -hmm. Which means this is a good opportunity for a little listening test. Uh, but real quick though, there were some that were made that were even more durable on the inside. Take a look at this guy. This is one of the famous GE 5 stars. That's the, a 5814A. And they did make the 6189 in this sort of style as well at one point, but they switched off of that after a while. And what's the five-star line? Uh, it's uh, essentially just an improved quality, uh, selected, more durable, less microphonic, you name it. It's pretty much everything that they were promising on military and industrial tubes already to begin with. So G and a number of manufacturers came out with, with lines that were essentially the best of the best that they could make. Yeah. Yeah, there were the five stars. There were um, the RCA red bases, um, the uh, realistic gold pins. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different ones where they, they were trying to differentiate themselves and offer something a little bit more, I think. Yeah, and, some, and sometimes it's a valid claim and sometimes not so much. Mm -hmm. So you can see here again, our plate structure stayed the exact same, but they've added a third mica on the top. They've doubled up the two main micas that are holding everything together, and they've stiffened it up further here with some extra support posts. And this tube is apparently supposed to have very low microphonics, although all three of these had very low microphonics. And they all sound really good. Quite similar, but they do have their differences. So why don't we pop on over to the listening room and uh, listen to the same segment on all three, and we'll see what you guys think, and see you back in a minute. Thank you. 
зажурилася. What did you think of that track? We've used it a number of times. That is um, the Ukrainian fusion folk group Daka Braka. Off, um, I think that might be their first debut album. It's, uh, Alambari, I think, and the track is Yasiv Nevtoy Litak. Well, of course you know that because I just put it up on the screen so you could take a look at it. <laughs> yeah, uh, we've seen them what live twice, or, yeah. or and we've actually got. Uh, Charles just recently had a birthday, so he got um, he got a ticket for the coming performance. So we're going to see them a third time, and they just keep getting better and better. They they really do an excellent uh, live show. The music is really interesting. It's different. They have excellent recordings too. So the the live show to the recordings is very comparable. That's right. And whoever does their sound is absolutely excellent because the musicians themselves are bringing out. Uh, they're deliberately bringing out. Uh, notes and tones during the performance. Uh, one of the things they do in one of the one of the tracks that they do is uh, animal sounds, bird sounds, and stuff like that. And um, the uh, uh, you need to have a good recording to capture that kind of stuff. Um, and um, and they do. So it's always a lot of fun. And um, and if you haven't checked them out, we strongly suggest it. They're they're great. They have some great music out there. Yeah, and if actually if they're coming to our town um, in uh, I think early December, that means that they're on tour right now. So who knows? Mm -hmm. They might be coming to a place really close to you. Yeah, 
Okay, well, so these tubes, um, I've been digging them out of our uh, our pile of 12 AU7s. We're in the process of testing them. They're going to be in the store as soon as this video is live. And uh, if you're interested in them, they are all US made. So that means they're tariff exempt. <laughs> hey, <laughs> that's always nice. Yeah, which um, uh, thanks to the, the new shipper and new broker that we've been using now for what, about two or three weeks? Mm -hmm. um, the, we can actually exempt them at the point of purchase. So you don't have to pay the tariff and then, you know, sometimes you get a refund, sometimes you don't. So it, it's still a little bit, you know, messed up because it, the rules are changing. And, and it quadruples our paperwork in the background here. But quadruples? <laughs> if not more. <laughs> oh, geez, it takes me about five times longer to handle the paperwork yeah. now. So, yeah. And it, it takes you, allow... what, three times longer to handle the shipping? Yeah, it does allow stuff to move across the border cleanly, though, and, um, and there's no issues as far as we can tell. So we're happy with that. Okay, I've got one question before we go. Okay. You've got... For a long time, we used to see uh, uh, green check marks on our tubes, but now we've got a green and a red check mark. What does that mean? Is, yeah. that a, is that a testing note that you make? So this means that I've double cleared the tubes because fairly recently, probably in the last couple of months, uh, we became aware of another type of noise that could be induced onto a tube only if it's running on an AC filament supply. And that is an AC hum that's getting un induced on the cathode. And uh, it's really hard to find it. So I, I double clear them. I clear them two different ways with an AC and a DC heater on the tubes now. And I make sure nothing gets through that can potentially be noisy. Right, so that hopefully will catch. I mean, there probably weren't that many tubes. In fact, we only, I think you caught one tube before we even shipped it, or did we, how yeah. we shipped it? Yeah, yeah, and I, I think one customer got one that we ended up replacing, but um, for the most part, not that many of them have noisy cathodes, but when they have a noisy cathode, they have a noisy cathode. Right, so filtering them out before uh, we send them off to a customer is a good idea. So, mm -hmm. I mean, one of the things that we work really hard at uh, besides providing really quality vintage tubes is is not having returns because returns cost us a fortune yeah um, and we want to supply quality stuff we don't want anything failing or being noisy in system it's also annoying as hell for customers yeah so the i i don't know what our return rate is because we've never had to actually calculate it but it's almost zero <laughs> yeah it's fairly low yeah. yeah yeah so anyways excellent work charles thanks for doing that and if you stay to the very end, here's some discount codes to help you out. There's a secret code that a lot of people get that's really easy to figure out. And we can reach almost everybody around the world with $20 flat rate shipping. But if your order's $150 or more after discount, the shipping's on us, folks. Take care, everyone. This is Jim. And Charles. Cheers, everyone.